Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Intergalactic Outlaw. Today's video is going to be about a protagonist some of you may or may not know, Samus Aran. A lot of this information is sourced with the Metroid graphic novels volume 1 and volume 2, which most consider to be canon. Some don't, but a lot of these panels were also used in a few of the games. So that's where the information is sourced from. Samus Aran is the main protagonist in the Metroid series of games and the Galactic Bounty Hunter. Samus has not been fleshed out as much as the other Nintendo characters in the roster. She's often seen as silent and she hardly speaks. In fact, a lot of people at one point thought Samus wasn't even a woman. A lot of people thought Samus was a man until Smash Brothers. Uh, however, even in silence, I guarantee you that Samus is one of Nintendo's more mature, tragic, and one of their most interesting characters, especially when it comes to Samus and dealing with her duty and her job as a galactic bounty hunter. As stated before, Samus has kind of a tragic backstory, especially when compared to characters like Mario or Kirby or Donkey Kong. Uh, it begins as a child. She saw her parents get killed in front of her by the space pirate Ridley. You know, a very dark turn of events for Nintendo. And she struggles not only with her past as from that childhood experience, but she also suffers from PTSD and she struggles against herself in a lot of games such as Metroid Prime Fusion. She experiences multiple mental blocks and trauma due to fighting multiple aliens or multiple alien worlds and even being infected with an alien parasite. And it was this trauma and some of these experiences who would make Samus who she is that we would come to find out and know. And now I'll go on to what actually gave her her Chozo DNA and what also really confirmed for her that she wanted to be a bounty hunter. Samus was infused with Chozo DNA by Old Bird and Grey Voice, who were essentially her mentors. This was after she showed bravery on the planet Zeebs. This was an incident involving Mother Brain and some of the life forms on planet Zeebs. This is where Samus got her resolve to be a prime hunter and uh, join the Federation. This is where she truly discovered herself after finding she wanted to prevent the bloodshed and senseless death in the universe. While a part of the Federation, Samus wouldn't be able to run away from her past and she would once again be traumatized by the space pirates. Samus encountered some space pirates who she noticed had children with them and they were enforcing child labor which reminded her of her past and it infuriated her. Samus seeing the space pirates went to arrest them and the space pirates seeing that Samus was alone went to shoot at Samus. A firefight ensued after this in which Samus would go berserk and decide to kill all the space pirates. It wasn't until she heard the voice of a little girl who reminded Samus of herself that reminded her of who she was. And instead of killing the space pirates, she simply went to arrest them. This brought about a huge change in the character of Samus and a huge change leading her mercilessness to compassion. And we would see a much more compassionate Samus after this, who could be compassionate with those she loved and merciless to those who were her enemies. Let's get into Samus's abilities. And Samus has multiple abilities that change with the games. These abilities are different in Metroid, Fusion, Metroid Dread, and they're also different in Prime Hunters. But there are a set of revolving abilities as well that she seems to repeat throughout all of these journeys. Some of Samus's repeating abilities are the combat suit, in which in many games she's shown having different combat suits to fit the situation. She also is equipped with her arm blaster, very similar to Mega Man, which she can either shoot missiles, she can charge shots, or she can just fire it regularly. And she also has different beams, also depending upon the combat situation and the game. There's also her iconic Morph Ball form. This form allows her to unleash bombs and allows her to get into tight spaces by compressing her body to that of the size of a little small ball. Since Samus's abilities change game to game in Dread and Prime Hunter and other games, I won't be going over all of those abilities in this video. Instead, what I'll do is whenever I make a video about those games, that's when I'll go over her abilities in those games. But just to not make this video too long, 
I won't go over all of those abilities in this game, just her core set and her repeating ability. In conclusion, Samus is one of Nintendo's most underrated and underrepresented characters, but one of their most intriguing. She has a very complex backstory and a very in-depth backstory that more people should know as we get into the re-release of Metroid Prime and those who may be interested in Metroid Dread and other Metroid games. She was one of Nintendo's first mature characters and their Metroid games have revolutionized their own version and their own type of games, the Metroidvania series type games. This game, this video was a backstory to Samus, the character, but in the future, I will be making videos on some of the games and her abilities and the story of those games. So stay tuned for that and subscribe for more. Until next time, guys, peace.